12 Most Underrated Mechanical Beast Horror Movies You Need to Watch We live in a world where much is dependent on artificial intelligence. With our technological advancements and developments of robots, we have often been intrigued by the thought, what if the systems go rogue? From as early as sci-fi flicks picked up steam, this has fueled some terrifying movies about a mechanical beast or a killer robot. Some terrific classics in this genre like Robocop, Transformers, and Terminator have raked in the big bucks at the box office. These have prompted more attempts exploring the concept, and in this video, we will take you through some of our choicest picks from this genre. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Screamers, 1995. In a futuristic world, interplanetary war has ravaged the landscape. To negotiate a peace treaty, a commander travels with a handful of soldiers. However, danger lurks in every corner for them, as they have to pass through a treacherous wasteland. Here live the Screamers, blade-wielding, self-replicating killing machines that were once devised by man to hunt down all enemies. With years of no human guidance, these machines now have one solitary mission, which is to eliminate all forms of life. Can Colonel Hendrickson make his way through these killer robots? This imaginative plot was inspired by one of Philip K. Dick's short stories, but the makers made a few modifications. For instance, the story showed the wasteland to be a result of nuclear war between U.S. and Russia, but in the film, it's shown to be in a completely different location. You can hardly tell the lack of budget, as the makers constructed a brilliant set for the devastated planet. Peter Weller, the Robocop star, turns on the heat with a stunning performance that will please his fans. Even the supporting cast turned out to be quite good. The only issue with the movie is that the special effects could have been better and are choppy in places. However, the robots are well made, and the sound they make is spine-chilling. With a greater budget, the attack scenes could have been better portrayed. Overall, if you're looking for an innovative sci-fi adventure, Screamers would fit the bill perfectly. <laughs> Chopping Mall 1986. A few of the employees in a shopping mall planned for a late-night party, for which they stayed back after the mall was closed for the night. However, their plans take a hit when the mall's security system becomes a problem for them. The mall had set up a robot security system that malfunctioned and caused these robots to go berserk on the group. With the mall locked, can they find a way to escape these murderous robots? Chopping Mall might sound like a total gore fest, but it is certainly not about mindless violence. In fact, the movie has some interesting circumstances and situations that you will never find anywhere else. Don't put your thinking caps on while watching this film, and don't ask questions like how they found automatic rifles in the mall. The CGI is laughable, but we feel it wasn't really meant to be taken seriously. B-movie fans will love the fast-paced action and the tension in the plot, where you constantly wonder who will manage to survive the deadly bots. The shooting was done in Sherman Oaks Galleria, a real-life mall where a scene in the movie Commando was also shot. There is one noticeable change from the usual splatter movies. Here, the young people fight the robot together instead of getting killed after being singled out. The movie could have been much better with some subtle changes, but what you have is still a fun flick for a casual movie night. Squeak! Virus, 
1999. A disastrous typhoon rattles an American tugboat, and the crew takes refuge in an abandoned Russian vessel. They soon find out that the Russian crew members had been murdered by a mysterious alien force. Realization sets in that they are now locked in the ship with an alien force on the prowl. With the storm going nowhere, the crew must face the aliens, which treat humans as a virus that must be exterminated. A story of survival with a premise where technology failed humans is a deadly duo that always hits the jackpot. In this film, the enjoyable romp is often dubbed by many as lacking in creativity. We beg to differ, because Virus has offered us tons of entertainment and a tension-filled atmosphere that makes it the perfect thriller. The mechanical marvels in this film are to watch out for. Right from the depiction of the alien monstrosity to the chase sequences involving a half-human, half-machine structure, you will be amazed at the work from Tippett Studios' CGI team. The Goliath robot was built by them with utmost finesse, where they crafted the nine-feet-tall structure with three and a half months. The acting department has been well handled by the likes of Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Sutherland. The climax could have been better, but we're not complaining after such a fun show. Hardware, 1990. It's a world ravaged by nuclear war where the Earth has become a radioactive wasteland. A desert scavenger comes across a strange robotic head in the middle of nowhere, and a space marine gifts it to his girlfriend Jill, who is a sculptor. But when she tries to use the robotic head, it somehow gets activated and starts rebuilding itself. It turns out that the robot is actually a Mark 13, which is a deadly military cyborg from an abandoned project. The robot must be stopped before it can exterminate Jill, and it's up to her boyfriend to save her. The underrated South African director, Richard Stanley, brings in the elements from his masterpiece, Dust Devil. The themes like Old Testament, sexual violence, and dystopia come together to carve out this thrilling journey. It has a straightforward narrative and gets to the point fairly quickly. The use of montage is spot on, with the nightmarish effect being magnified perfectly. Don't miss out on the generous doses of sarcasm that the director has on offer. For instance, the Killer Mark 13 is adorned with stars and stripes. Richard Stanley had plans of using stop-motion animation for the Mark 13, but due to lack of time and funds, the ideas could not materialize. He even wrote a sequel for this movie that got stalled, as the rights to the original was split between many. Hardware is a cinematic gem that we strongly recommend, in spite of the harsh criticism that it draws from the critics. Ah, water! <laughs> Demon Seed 1977 Alex is a scientist who is obsessed with developing a supercomputer. His wife, Susan, isn't too happy with his decision, and the couple is thinking of separating. When Alex develops an incredibly smart computer called Proteus 4, it asks for an open terminal to study humans. He refuses its request, but Proteus finds another way to take over Alex. Soon, the computer rapes his wife, hoping to have a child with her to become immortal. Can Proteus 4 be stopped before it's too late? Machine learning has often interested filmmakers to carve exciting plots, but seldom have we seen one that provides a machine with a definite purpose, conscience, and a calculative mind. That is precisely the antagonist in this movie, who leaves a thought-provoking message for you in the end. You will see how extreme human emotions handicap our potential. The thrilling story is a nail-biting battle of wits, where you are constantly wondering who will win. When Proteus develops a will of his own, you already know that things are about to go haywire from here. 
As it takes over the house, there is no let down in the buildup of suspense from the director, Donald Kamel. As for the cast, Julie Christie almost carries the entire film and does a fabulous job. The special effects might seem a bit unconvincing at times, but that is only to accommodate a restricted budget. This techno-horror masterpiece is too good to miss out on. Saturn 3, 1980. The plot is based in the distant future, where two lovers, Adam and Alex, are living on one of Saturn's moons. They are trying means of growing food to feed the starving Earth. A psychotic individual obsessed with Alex visits them with a false identity, and soon they find themselves trapped on the station with a deadly psychopathic robot on the loose. A super-intelligent 8-foot robot is not the easiest to combat. Saturn 3 is an underrated gem with a premise that certainly appeals to the masses. A murderous man and his 8-foot robot, after two souls who have nowhere to run, immediately make for a pot boiler. The sets are going to remind you a bit of Alien, even though the special effects might feel a bit lacking. While the storytelling is crisp, there are moments in the end where you will feel like a few questions are left unanswered. The movie drives home a few points, with the acting performances of Kirk Douglas and Farrah Fawcett. A special appreciation has to be reserved for the work on the robot, Hector. It's certainly one of the scariest movie robots of all time, and gives out the invincible vibe with its massive appearance. The direction in this movie came under a lot of controversies following the removal of the original director, John Barry. It was later revealed that John would hardly come to the shooting and had little idea on how to handle the scenes, which forced Stanley Donan to step into the director's shoes. Even with such confusion, the movie turned out fairly well for an exciting sci-fi adventure. Runaway, 1984. In a futuristic world, robots are used extensively for everyday work. Sometimes a few robots malfunction, and a cop is specialized to tackle such situations. However, while investigating one of the robotic murders, he finds out that someone is programming these robots to be killers. Time is running out fast, as the cop must find out who's behind the sinister plot because his own son has become a target. We all love watching futuristic films because it gives us an insight into how the world might look several years down the line. In Runaway, they show you a world where there is rampant mistrust among fellow humans, and they are somewhat cold-hearted. Those who take an interest in artificial intelligence and cybernetics will love the plot on this one. Tom Selleck plays the frustrated cop who has to take on some murderous gadgets that are under the influence of a modified chip. The robots here are like mechanical hardware things, but even in their primitive structures, they pose quite a threat. The idea of cops going after rogue robots isn't the most original, but the presentation is good enough to win you over. Some well-thought-out special effects add to the charm of the movie, and it's a great joy to watch the heat-seeking bullets fired from the villain played by Gene Simmons with his creepy stare. The plot gets a tad predictable, but you won't mind with so much going on in every scene. In short, this is a fine blend of a cop flick with some exciting sci-fi drama that makes for the ideal content for a fun movie night. Class of 1999, 1990. The high schools of the late 1990s USA are shown to be gang-plagued with rampant violence that even makes the police think twice before entering. To control the situation, some military cyborgs are tasked with keeping things peaceful. 
The teachers used to be afraid of the pupils, but with the new cyborg teachers, the tables turn. However, when they go a bit too far in controlling the unruly students, some of them get suspicious about their robotic identity. Sometimes even the implausible plots can be fun to watch. Class of 1999 wouldn't do so well in terms of believability, but it has all the elements to keep you glued to your seats. Some view it as a loose sequel to Mark Lester's own movie, Class of 1984. The moment three robotic teachers arrive with their strict discipline, things get interesting for the viewers. This movie is a mixture of The Terminator and Escape from New York. The gritty view of the future, the ironic humor, and some terrific performance from Malcolm McDowell, Pam Greer, and Stacey Keach add to the goodness of this film. The pumping rock soundtrack is catchy, as are the pseudo-military battle scenes. The special effects don't hit a home run, but it works just fine as a guilty pleasure. We would have liked the ending to be better constructed, but the movie still has enough entertainment to make this a cult classic. Come in fancy dress. Death Machine 1994. A company is experimenting with a robotic fighting machine that would be part human and part machine. However, their work seems to be unsatisfactory as the end result ends up killing a few innocent people. This causes Kale to fire Jack, the brains behind this project. However, Jack doesn't take his sacking too kindly and unleashes the deadliest weapon from his armory, a machine called War Beast that is determined to eliminate Kale and anyone who would help her. How often are satires misunderstood in cinematic history? This is just another case of that, where a carefully concealed comedy lurks underneath the apparently horrifying plot. The sense of fear is constructed skillfully, with some tongue-in-cheek humor to lure the audience in. For a tight budget, the special effects are impressive enough, and the robot is extremely well designed. In fact, it'll remind you of an alien Terminator hybrid. There are some vicious death scenes that are more about the shock value than the gore. The actors like Brad Dorif and Ellie Puget are appropriate in their parts, and the former stands out as the menacing villain who is a childlike psychotic genius. It pays homage to the directors of this genre. <laughs> Project Metal Beast, 1995. A CIA secret mission involved creating an army of soldiers with werewolf-like qualities by using werewolf blood. With slow progress in the research and scarcity of the blood, Agent Butler injected himself with the remaining blood and turned into a murderous werewolf. He was then killed with a silver bullet and cryogenically frozen. Many years later, a medical breakthrough with a metal-based synthetic skin is tested on the corpse. When the body is thawed and the bullets removed, the werewolf respawns. Only this time, it's almost invincible with its impenetrable skin. This movie is a curious case of the werewolf horror meeting a nightmarish medical thriller. For a B-movie, the concept is pretty unique. How often do you hear about a werewolf with a super hard skin? Besides the interesting plot, it offers some interesting characters who have been brought to life with some soulful acting performances. Barry Boswick and Kim Delaney are particularly impressive, while Kane Hodder is unrecognizable as the dangerous metal beast. There are a few gory bits, and one where the creature is killed in the end stands out. The metal beast looks pretty menacing and is sure to make the audience shudder during its murderous moments. John Carl Buechler shines bright with his creature effects and gets you hooked on the story once the monster is on the loose inside the facility. Ignore the cliches and the mild cheesiness and you will have a solid entertainer at hand. <laughs> Ah! 
<laughs> Tetsuo, the Iron Man, 1989. A metal fetishist sticks scraps of metal into his own body. A man was out for a drive with his girlfriend when he hits this weird fetishist. However, soon he realizes to his horror that slowly he is being overtaken by a strange disease that is turning his body into scrap metal. Nothing seemed to be able to stop the final mutation as he turns into a grotesque hybrid of flesh and metal. This is one of those movies that will never cease to amaze you no matter how many times you watch it. We have another action-packed film from the talented director Shinya Tsukamoto who also directed movies like Tokyo Fist and Bullet Ballet. This film will unleash upon you surreal mayhem, with possibly some of the most innovative cinematic techniques in the filming industry. The soundtrack is paid special attention, and the haunting effect of metal striking metal will ring in your ears. Making this film black and white is a masterstroke, and the makers bring in some top-notch special effects to make the gruesome moment stand out all the more. There is a strong manga influence that the fans will recognize, and if you can handle the gory moments, you are in for a fascinating experience. Hey, you're kind of cute. <laughs> Deadly Friend, 1986. Paul is a scientific whiz kid who has developed his own yellow robot named BB that serves as his friend and protector. He develops a friendship with his next door neighbor, Samantha, who lives with her abusive father. One day, he knocks her down the stairs, injuring her severely. After the hospital pulls the plug on her, Paul manages to steal her body from the hospital and implants his robot's microchips into her brain. This successfully responds her, but is she the same Samantha as before, or a deadly robot? The plot is weird and creepy, and is loosely based on a short novel called Friend by Diana Henstel. There are some truly scary moments, and the movie doesn't shy away from the gore either. Matthew Labarteau and the beautiful Christy Swanson are delightful in their respective roles. The latter stuns the audience with her realistic robotic moves. There are some outstanding moments, such as the basketball scene, that will be worth the watch. Besides the serious scenes, you also have some humorous elements to keep it a light-hearted business. From the director of A Nightmare on Elm Street, you expect nothing short of excellence, and he delivers with this goofy yet exciting sci-fi horror flick. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.